Chapter 2 Contents of the Gita Summarized While speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are truly wise lament neither for the living nor for the dead. Try to understand that there was never a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. As the embodied soul continuously passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. A sober person is not bewildered by such a change. King Yayati was old and he became young. That was the cause of happiness for everyone. Similarly, Bhishma is old and he'll become young. So why feel distressed? Arjuna speaks. What you are saying is correct, Krishna. But my mind is distressed. I'm attached to our relationship the way it is now. Thinking of him dying is causing me pain. Hey, Konteya. The temporary appearance of happiness and distress and their disappearance are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer seasons. They arise from sense perception and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. One who tolerates both happiness and distress is eligible for liberation. Sages have concluded that of the non-existent there is no endurance and of the eternal there is no change. Both Bhishma and you are eternal. Why are you thinking that either of you can be destroyed? This is the defect of your knowledge. No one is able to destroy the soul. Therefore fight, O descendant of Bharat. Arjuna speaks. But what will people say about one who has killed his own grandfather? Krishna speaks. Those who will criticize you for killing Bhishma are less intelligent. And why should you worry about what the less intelligent say? Actually, for the soul, there is never birth nor death. The soul is unborn, eternal, ever-existing and primeval. He is not slain when the body is slain. Hey, part, how can a person who knows that the soul is indestructible and eternal kill anyone or cause anyone to kill? Arjuna speaks. I accept all that, but why should I be the cause of their accepting new bodies? Krishna speaks. Whether you fight or not, they must change their bodies anyway, just as a person gives up his old and useless garments and accepts new ones. It's not a cause for distress, but for happiness. It is for their welfare. Otherwise, they will get old and suffer, and dying in battle promotes them to heaven. Fighting does not cause pain to anyone, for the soul cannot be cut to pieces by any weapon nor burned by fire, nor moistened by water, nor withered by the wind. But Krishna, a burning house harms the living entities within. So won't the soul be harmed by the destruction of the body? No, Arjun, no harm can come to the soul. The soul cannot be harmed by any weapon that you have in your chariot. The soul is invisible, inconceivable, and immutable. Therefore, you should not grieve for the body. Even if you do not accept Vedic philosophy, O mighty armed one, and you accept the opinions of atheists who think that there is no existence of life before or after the body. There isn't any God and when you die you're just dead. And heaven's just a fairy tale to put you to bed. There ain't nobody watching us cause nobody cares. And in the end we're living all alone. Still there is no reason to lament 